Caitlin, if you see the roll call, please. Trustee Doherty? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. Trustee Humphreys? Here. Trustee Cooper? Here. Trustee Stapleton? Here. President Graber? Here. Thank you very much. We are, um, we're on to agenda item number three. I would like to welcome our visitors, whether by future YouTube meetings um, or otherwise. We appreciate your interest in the library. We acknowledge that the Downers Grove Public Library sits on the unceded traditional and ancestral homelands of native peoples. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the indigenous peoples who have been the caretakers of the land throughout generations, past and present. We invite you to learn more about the genocide and forced displacement by non-native settlers and the ongoing injustices against native peoples. All right, we're now on to agenda item number four, approval of last month's minutes. Did anyone have any questions or comments regarding last month's minutes? Okay, we have a motion, a motion to approve last month's minutes that has been seconded. Caitlin, can you proceed with the roll call, please? Trustee Doherty? last month's minutes. We're now on to agenda item number five, financial matters. Julie, do you want to let us know how we're doing? All right, we are doing wonderfully. We are currently 75% through the year as of these financial statements. Um, you will notice that on the revenue side, our property tax collections are at 98.55%, and our overall revenue collected is at 99.18%. So we do anticipate collecting more than 100% of our anticipated revenue this year. Um, if you look at the budgeted revenue, you will see that we did um, much better in uh, things like um, meeting room reservations, et cetera, that we had thought would still, could still continue to be very low. Um, 2021, so we have had some recovery in that way. And then on the expenses, we are under budget in most lines with 66% spent. Um, so we are doing really, really well. And I just, in the invoices, I wanted to draw your attention to the invoices of note. There is one to Northbrook Library and that is um, for the Color of Law program. That is a group program that's being put on by the same group um, that will be covered by the IGA that is in item 8A uh, for your agenda. And that group is also having a meeting tonight that started at 7 o'clock, the Chris uh, Bolton, that Bolton program, author program is tonight. That was all I had on the financial matters. Does anyone have any questions or comments regarding the financial matters? We have a motion to approve the financial matters as presented. We have a motion to approve the financial matters as presented that has been seconded. Caitlin, can you proceed with the roll call, please? Trustee Doherty? Yes. Trustee Gavani? Yes. Trustee Humphreys? Yes. Trustee Pinto? Yes. Trustee Stapleton? Yes. President Gregory? Yes. Thank you very much. We have approved the financial matters as presented. We're now on to public comment on agenda items. Do we have any submissions? Okay. Now on to agenda item number seven, public comment on other library business. Okay, we had no public comment on agenda items and no public comment on other library business. So we're on to agenda item 8A, the intergovernmental agreement for the Illinois, for Illinois Library. 
libraries present? Illinois libraries present. Present? <laughs>
just attended last week a different um, local property tax uh, group that's another group that we participated in via an IGA from many, many years ago.
any, do we have any additional questions on the intergovernmental agreement for Illinois libraries to present? Oh, because it is a regional office. 
of Education in Texas that actually administers the program. Okay. So it's um, across the whole U.S. then? Uh, there are certain states, and Illinois is one of them. I believe it was something like 38 states or something like that. You could go to the, the TIPS USA uh, website and tell you all about them. So. Are there any local government? They do not actually have a listing of who their members in Illinois are. Word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. And, and LFI told us that they have other customers in Illinois who have done this. The LFI is a it's Library Furniture International, and they are one of the big furniture suppliers for libraries, especially here. Um, this is 
Society for Human Resource Managers, um, and really, you know, looking at how we do things and how we can do things better, and uh, working with Scott on what the division of labor is within their their duties. So it's it's going to be a really
people to choose from as a board because uh, I, I think Rashida was fantastic and I think there's there's a level, I mean you also you build trust by getting to know the person we had I think maybe two or three meetings with her in total. So I, I do see the benefit of that. I also see the benefit of just even within this topic there's a diversity of people who do what she does that I think we could benefit from hearing other people's perspectives. I don't necessarily want, I mean, it may be okay, but I, I'm thinking something along the lines of what Barnali was talking about. If there's a specific topic that affects a specific community, like having someone from who, who is, you know, has the personal experience within that community and the experience to, to help facilitate those discussions would I think be a good, um, I would be very supportive of that. I'm just trying to figure out where I fit in all of these three and two and one. I don't remember, frankly, when I filled this thing out, but I'm, training is good. I feel very strongly about that. I've been on this board for a long time, and yet there's an awful lot of it I don't know and wish I knew. And so I'm, I'm, there are a lot of different topics I don't know where I came down on the December date, but I have a strong opinion right now as I look at my calendar for the next two months and I'm booked. I, regardless of what I said before, I'm kind of hope maybe you don't do anything before the first year. And it's also important to remember that we will be doing our new strategic planning process in 2022 at some point. So there are likely to be additional meetings, focus groups, et cetera, through that process as well. Do we have a time frame for that? Yet? Not, nope. <laughs> Probably not January, February. No, we, um, the first, first things first, we'll have to go through like an RFQ um, to get uh, some qualification, a request for qualifications and get some consultants information, get an idea of what ballpark we're playing in as far as their general costs for a library of our size, probably do some virtual interviews and um, decide who fits best with you and whose process resonates with you. And once we select a consultant, then we'll create a timeline, yeah. um, you know, generally 2022. So we have some other topics we want to touch on. It would be probably a good idea to put those first one.
I do. I'm sure they have a lot of bylaws stuck up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all the fun stuff. But, um, and a lot of Rails has recently done a series of EDI training grants to libraries that one of the um, criteria for those grants is that they be available as an archive recording for at least 30 days after that training is actually. So if you can, can't attend live, then they'll send you the link. Now those are generally available um, on the archives forever, like some of the trainings are, but um, at least there are some opportunities to do self-paced that way. What's the reason that they are not archived as long? Um, generally, it, the speakers on these topics are not, yeah, they, it's within their contract that you don't own the content forever. Is, that goes back to the Northbrook Intergovernmental Agreement that we made. Are any of those, those were live, I heard Chris ask, but um, are they recorded? Some of them are, again, it goes back to the contract okay. with the specific author or the discussion. A lot of them are available if you go to our virtual program um, page on our website, you can see some of those discussions are still available, even some of the supplementary. Yeah. Those are other ones we could look at too, since we know they're covering those topics in a intergovernmental agreement. Can you give a reminder of those resources? I've been there a couple of times, but, but I don't think that often. Um, I know for me personally, watching the video on my own.
who talks on that topic to attorneys. Um, so I just thought maybe we could speak with other. It doesn't mean, you know, it could even be, I don't know if you do that on the staff side, but you know, how is Downers different than one of the other libraries? We read your article, Barnelli, and learned about whichever other library was quoted in there and what's going on there, which I wouldn't have been aware of. Yeah, I think in general that's just good for us. And I and I do think that to kind of what what everyone is saying, those conversations that we had, they I mean statement framework and the learning management statement for example, um, I feel like we start to trust each other a little bit more. Because as a as a board, just for me being on the board for as long as I've been and whatever it is that we hear, only in the last three, four months have I felt like, oh, I'm supposed to be here and and I feel like these are people that I can trust and we can have a really authentic, honest conversation with one another. So I think that's really healthy as well. So, and then to what you're saying, I think it's great because other libraries are doing amazing things. We can park in these, and some are doing, some, some are a lot of looking to us because we're leading the way to do things. So that's great. I don't know how that works. But, yeah. oh, unfortunately, <laughs> there's people with new things at Oh, that's great. Like, yeah. 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 Um, so it's it, it really, <laughs> Prior to COVID, the Illinois Library Association Conference's Trustee Day is really like the place for you to go and talk to other library board members because OMA carves out the training with representatives from the statewide association, makes it no longer have to be OMA compliant. So all six of you can go to the ILA conference and participate without having the OMA restrictions. The problem is if, if you try to have a meeting with another board, the hard part is that you both have to post it as a meeting, as an open meeting, and then you start getting into the thing because each board you're supposed to meet at a location that is uh, convenient to your constituency. So if you guys are trying to meet with the Oak Park board. What about West Money? I know. <laughs>
key topics as they come up. Yes. And possibly a another kind of training that would offer a more opportunity for you all to get to know each other, relationship build, communicate, etc. A retreat. A, a retreat as it were.
take us some changes, but no time to take one. I will move to approve that Julie continues to <laughs> adapt the COVID-19 plan as needed. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve agenda item 9A, the COVID-19 response and phase reopening plan as presented. Caitlin, can you proceed with the roll call, please? Trustee George? Yes. Trustee Gunnar? Yes. Trustee Humphrey? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. We have approved agenda item 9A, and we're now on to agenda item number 10, the library director's report. Julie. All right. Um, I do want to draw your attention to the last bullet point in Ian's report this month, which is about the elevator. Um, this is on the no surprises list, so I do not want you guys to be surprised uh, if the elevator becomes a 2022 project because we've been having some issues recently and it's looking more and more like we will need an elevator update sooner rather than later. So he and I have been talking about the idea of possibly putting off the carpet and doing carpet kind of all at once. Um, per floor the way it is currently listed in the capital needs um, project. It has us doing a quarter of the building at a time. We may change the way that is actually done to conform with all of this. No, uh, no quotes on that yet, um, but oh, that also may be something that comes through. There is another intergovernmental uh, a contract that includes elevators and installation of the elevators, etc. So, and, uh, so far we haven't identified one specifically for carpet, but there may be as well. So, just wanted to give you guys that heads up. Um, also, uh, we have Jen, the queen of grants, over here to thank. For um, Jen has now won, on the behalf of this library, the ARPA grant from the State Library, an IMLS grant, and two FEMA grants so far this year. So Jen has just been going great guns on the grant front. Um, that will be, so we have fully funded our Bridging the Digital Divide uh, grant through the state and the IMLS grants, and that will be doing more laptop and hotspot kits uh, to bridge the digital divide for our um, most vulnerable patients. So, Thank you, Jen. Yay, Jen! <laughs> um, other great news uh, at the Public Library Association Biennial Conference in next spring, we will have a significant presence because our staff will be doing three different presentations. So they were all accepted. We are now sending a huge contingent to PLA this year. It will be, it's going to be a great experience. Those include um, talking about our anti eight statements and issuing anti eight statements and our podcast cover to cover. So a lot of staff will be headed out. Um, and speaking of the anti eight statement framework, I, I do have in the uh, in your packet the paragraph that they added for context at the beginning of the uh, framework for making anti-hate statements that we had discussed at the previous meeting. So if you have any feedback on what is there in that italicized first paragraph, let me know. And our final bit is all about insurance. Uh, the Libraries of Illinois Risk Agency renewal that was put in the budget at a more than 20% uh, possible renewal rate. We are anticipating the actual renewal will be between 8 and 10%. We'll find out for sure next week, and that will come before you in November. And then our, our employee benefits renewal was flat this year. So no changes in coverage and no changes in premium. So that was really excellent. That's all I have. Excellent. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
in November as a continuation of what we discussed in this evening. So I don't know if we need a motion to do that at this point, or... No, we don't okay. just go on the, unless you're ready to vote on, to approve something that you discussed in closed session, we will just put that back on the agenda for okay. November. All right, sounds good. We're now on to agenda item 13, trustee comments and request for information. How many people have come up to me in the last few weeks about the land acknowledgement statement and program? And I guess a lot of people thought I wrote it since I read it. And I quickly corrected them on that. But it was, I'm sure not universally, totally well received, but it was very well received, including for some people I wouldn't have expected.